have to go with farting in class as number one of my favorite moments because, you know, why wouldn't I want to be publicly humiliated in front of, you know, teenagers around the world that day? Um, <laughs> uh, what else? Inherit the wind when she uh, farts in school. I heard you laid down the law. <laughs> told you it was on the news <laughs> i love the episode when um everyone thinks becky is giving the finger flipping the bird in her school photo and unfortunately i mean spoiler alert it's not her but finally becky got a little street cred you know like people started thinking she was kind of cool after that and like as becky for a second there she was feeling herself well, i guess the whole school knows what does the whole school know Last picture, fourth row, second from the left. Oh my God! Becky, you're giving the finger! Let me see! For DJ, it's always DJ being odd that kind of was the most fun. Anything from uh, being a, a prevert and a peeping Tom at one point, uh, and then peeking at the neighbor as if that wasn't enough. Diane called me a prevert. <laughs> No, you're not a prevert, honey. You're a pervert. <laughs> For the Barbie doll heads and body parts being torn up under the bed. Oh my God! What? It's a box full of little heads. <laughs> and then that kind of progressed to his dealing with race and trying to understand why he didn't want to kiss the girl for the play. Your dad and I were wondering how come you don't want to kiss that girl in the play. I don't know and then being really educated and making him open his eyes. You do know that you don't have to have sex just to have a boyfriend. I know. The show for me that I get the most, I guess, feedback from is the birth control episode. That was, I think, really groundbreaking, um, having an honest conversation about birth control between a mother and a daughter. I can tell you that over the years, so many mothers and daughters have approached me, so, so many, and said, um, you know, we, after that, we had a real conversation. We, we saw that that was possible and that we could laugh, and it was really awkward, but we did it. Well, I, w I was thinking, you know, um, j just in case we decide to, um, that it's time f for me to... Um, get some birth control. We dealt with kind of darker topics. Uh, the death of Roseanne's dad and the impact. Uh, that scene with Laurie Metcalf trying to tell their aunt that he's dead on the phone is a classic. I said, Dad has passed away. <laughs> he's passed away. <laughs> Dad is gone. <laughs> Dad's dead. <laughs> he's dead. You know, you start looking at crime and punishment where we started talking about domestic violence. It's no big deal. What are you saying? He hit you. It's not like he forgot your birthday. Or in my case, white men can't kiss and then homeward bound. Look, buddy, I know you're really embarrassed right now. I just want you to know that what you've been doing, it's just a part of growing up. So you're proud of me? <laughs> you know, they were hard episodes in one sense but really great episodes and you had this confidence because we had such a great staff of writers and everybody we could tackle anything i think some of the show's funniest moments are just when we tease each other uh lovers lanes is a very funny episode in the very beginning when they start teasing becky about how they're going to embarrass her <laughs> at the bowling alley with the guy that she's really into Oh, are we going to be working the lounge tonight? <laughs> and she's saying to her parents, to Roseanne and Dan, please don't embarrass me. You know, this is really important. Well, we're going to be at the bowling alley, and Chip's going to be at the bowling alley. <laughs> we're bound to run into one another. <laughs> please don't embarrass me. Please. Oh, honey, there's no way we'd embarrass you. Their facial expressions, what they do, Roseanne's like lifting her nostril up, 
John's like rolling his head, his eyes back in his head. And you see my mortified face, but you can also see that I am just struggling to keep it together because they're just pushing it and pushing my limit. So it was successful on their part. George Clooney is just someone that our cast absolutely adores. He is so much fun. He's so funny. You know, he, he used to play basketball with me and my brother and my dad, and he's so down to earth. Look, Roseanne. I'm looking, Booker, come on, give me a break. All right, I'll give you a half an hour and it's coming out of your check. Well, there goes the Porsche. You know, he's the kind of guy that you want to like go watch a game with and have a beer with. I mean, I couldn't have a beer back then, but um, now I could, George, if you want to grab a beer with me. No, okay. No, but um, you know, the funny thing is, is when someone like him becomes so famous, you kind of think, oh, what happened to them, you know? But I think all of us know for sure that he's still George. I mean, he just has to be, which makes him just all the more attractive and lovable. Quinn was such a generous actor. Um, he was so talented. He was so handsome, but he just never acted like that. He was just like a tender, funny, fun person to be around. And um, as an actress, you don't always get someone that to work with that you have chemistry with. And I just really, really lucked out. It doesn't hurt that he's really hot. But um, we really um, commemorate him this season. And as we were shooting the episode particularly that kind of deals with his loss, um, everyone on set really felt his presence very, very strongly. So it was very powerful and we still miss him a lot. Hey, everything's gonna be great, okay? Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.